Welcome, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, to Montgomery College and our beautiful cultural arts center. By the way, uh, this building was designed by the Smith Group. Uh, you'll hear from Robert Bull, uh, principal in uh, that company, in just a moment. Uh, my name is Brad Stewart. I'm the vice president and provost. We're happy that you could all make it tonight for the third design charrette uh, for the Ike and Catherine Leggett uh, Science and Math Center. Uh, we hope to have a very fruitful conversation tonight. Uh, the building is starting to take shape. Uh, we're going to show you some very interesting pictures uh, and go through them for you. And then uh, you'll have a chance to comment uh, and give feedback on those things. Uh, like we did for the first two charrettes, everything uh, that is, every issue that's raised tonight, we'll capture it. Uh, and it will go on the website uh, here at NC Blogs. Uh, and you can find that uh, and take a, a closer look at the PowerPoint presentation, uh, the answers to questions that you've asked in the past, uh, etc. Uh, so, uh, welcome. Uh, we have some VIPs with us tonight. Uh, Mayor Kate Stewart from the City of Tacoma Park. Right here. Our next year, Council Member from Ward 1, Peter Kovar. From Park and Planning, Executive Director of the Park and Planning. And of course, I'll get in trouble if I don't mention Dr. Sanjay Rai, the Senior Vice President for Academic Affairs. Uh, uh, so tonight, uh, Michael Aiken from Link Strategy Partners uh, will bring you up to speed of where we've been and where we're going to go. Michael? Thank you here. very much. Grab this because they're recording it in the background. Before we get started, I want to stop and acknowledge, obviously today is 9-11, and our thoughts and prayers will always be with that day 17 years ago. Uh, my name is Michael Aiken. As you'll recall, for some of you who've been at the past meetings, I run a firm called Link Strategic Partners. We're a community engagement firm. Our entire job on this project is to make sure community feedback is captured and used by the architecture team of the university and that it's central to the planning here. So that, that is our role. We've got a lot to get through tonight. We're going to use a very similar format to the last time we were together. We're going to spend the first hour or so together in this room going through a really in-depth PowerPoint presentation. I'm going to tell you all up front so it doesn't surprise anyone, we have 106 slides to get through tonight. We're going to do it at a rapid pace. It's going to be extremely granular. We're not holding anything back. We're trying to share absolutely everything we can possibly share. We're going to go through three different options with quite a bit of refinement tonight. And then we're going to break up into working groups. Uh, everyone should get out a, had a number assigned to them and their name tag when they came in. We're going to break up into four groups at each station. We'll have large scale printouts of the designs you're going to see tonight. Each station will have an architect there, I have a member of my team there to help facilitate and a note taker so we can really get into a really detailed discussion. All of those notes will be captured as we continue to refine the process. So that's what we're going to be doing tonight and then we'll come back together here at the end to have each group report out on what they discuss so that there's awareness among everyone. In case some people are joining at this stage of the process, we want to quickly recap what we discussed at our last meeting when we were all together way back on July 12th. I want to go to the next slide. Very similar format that night to this night, um, and so let's go through some of that feedback. Over the summer, since the last time we were together, there have been four office hour sessions and two tours. They've been quite well attended. All of the feedback, both from the office hours, the community meetings, and any question raised in the tour have also all been captured and put up online. This is what it looks like online. Don't squint, you're not going to be able to read it, but there are multiple pages of this. Literally every single question or comment that has been asked has been recorded. It hasn't been edited, and there's also been a reply provided by the project team and the college. So if there's a question that you've asked, it should be up here. If it's not, please let us know, because the goal is to capture 100% of what is said throughout this process. A couple things from previous meetings that were raised that we want to make sure we keep coming back to. Uh, after our first meeting, we had a lot of questions about the engagement process. How specifically was feedback going to be used? Hopefully in our last meeting, and then by the end of tonight, you'll see at a very specific level how we're using each individual piece of feedback as we continue to evolve these designs. There were questions raised about environmental considerations, not just the lead status of the building, but what happens during construction, what are the environmental impacts of that, and how do we mitigate for them. The design 
design elements, what people like, what they don't like. Um, internal considerations. That means this building has to work not just for neighbors aesthetically, but it also, has to, it also has to work internally for the students who are going to use the building and the faculty who are going to be teaching in it. So how do you balance those so that everyone gets what they need out of this? And then construction considerations. The design stage is the fun part. We sit together and then construction happens and we want to make sure we're mitigating that impact so that it's not a burden as you're living through that piece of it. Since the time of our last meeting, here's additional feedback we heard, both in our last public meeting and over the summer. We need to continue to evolve concepts. So let me say in our last meeting, we looked at three design concepts. We got really good feedback on all three of them. When we went through and analyzed the comments really closely, concepts two and three were the concepts that generated the most discussion. I would say interest, uh, just in the number of questions that were raised, suggestions that were made in refining them. So for tonight's uh, presentation, the architects have taken concepts two and three and refined them even further and also added another concept for consideration. So that's what we'll be doing here tonight. Um, we were asked to look at the pedestrian and ve vehicular traffic flows. How's that going to work entering and exiting the site? So we'll go through that tonight. Minimize noise generation. So when this building is built and up and running, how do we make sure both the noise and also the light pollution from the building doesn't have a spillover effect into the surrounding community? Um, active accountability and communication during the construction phase, and then finally tree protection and preservation. So those are all comments that came up more than once. They came up multiple times throughout the process. We want to make sure we're addressing all of those extremely proactively today. We're about halfway through the process. So if you look up here, we're at the September 11th design meeting charrette. We'll have two more design charrettes, and these start happening in more rapid succession. We'll come back together again on October 2nd, then again on October 16th, and then we'll come back together again in late fall or early winter. What I want you to take away from this slide is that there is still plenty of opportunity to provide feedback, but don't hold on to your comments for the next meeting. We need to hear now what you like and what you don't like, because the architects are going to be working between this meeting and October second to continue to refine comments. The goal in every stage is to get more and more clarity on what you're liking, what you're not liking, what's working and what's not, so that each time we're back together, we're presenting a further refined concept. So make sure you, you speak up tonight and give us your feedback any way you feel comfortable. One of the comments we heard is that the issues exhibit was just too small in line and too hard to read. So we've reformatted that. It's easier to print out now, easier to read on screen, so you should see that pretty clearly. I'm going to turn it over to Bob now to go through some other feedback, and then I'll come back up at the end. Bob? Great. Thanks, Michael. So again, my name is Bob Bull. I'm with the Smith Group. I'm uh, one of the partners and uh, representing a pretty large design team that's all sort of scattered throughout here. There's uh, four or five of us that will be help helping to lead the breakout sessions after this presentation. So some of the other comments we got was uh, to please provide a north orientation on each one of the slides. So you'll see uh, this symbol used, uh, the north arrow on all the uh, graphic representations of the design, as well as to provide dimensions. So we have a red uh, dimension line showing all the primary dimensions on the concepts uh, that we'll be presenting tonight. Just keep in mind that this is still a very conceptual study. All the options that we're showing right now are very conceptual. The dimensions are as close as we can project right now. They will evolve uh, considerably between now and the, the final design documentation, but uh, they, are, they should be fairly close to what we're presenting there. And uh, for reference, uh, all the presentations now will have page numbers, so you can refer to those page numbers if you're referencing a specific item on a particular portion of the slideshow. So one of the primary comments, uh, design comments, that we got uh, from a variety of people uh, when we were in the breakout sessions as we were presenting the uh, schemes before was, uh, why don't you make the building curved so that it can be very similar to the Nunley Center further up uh, Fenton Street? And uh, I think part of that was predicated on concept one the last time we showed it, which had an angled facade along uh, Fenton Street. Uh, one of the reasons we did look at this, and one of the reasons that we do not think that this is a viable option going forward is that when you curve a facade, it creates a series of inefficiencies within the building footprint. We are dealing with laboratories uh, as the primary program element for the building uh, uh, organization that is along Fenton Street. If we take those labs and we try to rotate them and fan them out on a curve, we create these inefficiencies in between each one of those rectangular labs. Our current estimate is that that's about a, a one foot four of additional space that would have to be added in between each laboratory, which would effectively increase the 
uh, projection of the building closer to Tacoma Avenue by 14 to 20 feet, something or somewhere around there. We think for that particular reason, this is not a viable option, not because we don't think it's a worthwhile aesthetic expression, but primarily because it's going to create a, a larger building that imposes more on the neighborhood, which we think is uh, uh, counter to some of the other uh, initiatives we've heard from both the um, college and from the community. Uh, one of the uh, other primary questions that was asked is how are vehicles going to access the site once the new building is brought online? Uh, so we, we did this diagram to represent uh, what is the primary sort of vehicular circulation corridor within the neighborhood, which is Fenton Street, running north and south between the campus and the railroad tracks and the uh, metro tracks. Uh, so one of the things in consultation with the college that we think um, we're willing to uh, propose here and commit to is that the uh, Loading facilities for the new building could be and probably should be co-located with the current loading facilities with Science North, which are generally in this particular area right here. There, there's a lot of advantages to co-locating those facilities because there are screening elements that we can employ to minimize their visual impact on the neighborhood. And having it all co-located in one location, you can service both buildings and have a much more minimized impact on the uh, context and the community environment. The other thing that we're suggesting is that um, there is uh, right now two curb cuts on the current site, one right off of Fenton Street and another off of Tacoma Avenue. The current parking lot is used unofficially as a drop-off area. If we actually added a second curb cut here, we could effectively create a more formalized drop-off area and control the traffic in and out of the site and limit that vehicular access and disruption to Fenton Street. That would prevent the sort of cross-through traffic going to Tacoma Avenue and hopefully contain as much of that activity as possible away from the residential area along the uh, Fenton Street and adjacent to the, um, the railroad tracks. Uh, one particular element that we are still uh, evolving or, or studying is the uh, development of a parking area. Currently, there's 74 parking spaces, and you can sort of see underneath this image here that dark green is the current footprint of the uh, existing parking lot. So what we're looking at currently is that uh, a reduction, but still maintenance of some parking area. So we're looking at about 45 or 35 to 40 spaces uh, within that current parking area that could be accessed from this existing drop-off area and curb cut uh, with an, uh, a one-way out uh, off of Tacoma Avenue. And uh, the college is considering options where we could sign this off so it is uh, dedicated only for faculty parking and limit um, the potential cross-cut traffic through that area to, again, minimize the, the vehicular disruption of vehicles coming out onto Tacoma Avenue to access the parking and access the project site. One other uh, attribute of this drop-off area that um, creating these two curb cuts here would provide is that we would be able to put some handicapped parking right immediately adjacent to the building and right near the, that drop-off area, which would be uh, very well aligned with the uh, current ADA uh, expectations or ADA uh, handicap uh, parking guidelines for the project. Another question that came up was pedestrian access. Where are the pedestrians going to come from? How are they going to get to the building? How are they going to get into the building? And how are they going to leave? One thing that's very uh, unique about this campus is that at the north end, where the Nunley Center is, is the primary focus and landing pad for the campus. Almost all the vis visitors to campus either come from parking garages or metro or buses that organ are organized around this facility, so right where the red dot is. From there, you would have some pedestrian filtration uh, through the existing network of uh, walkways, both internal to the campus and on the perimeter. And those primary pedestrian access points and access ways would drive the organization of your entry and egress out of this building as a uh, formal reaction to those existing patterns. There is some uh, small amount of pedestrian traffic that may be coming from the Tacoma Park Metro. Uh, we've heard anecdotally that there isn't a lot of that, that a lot of the students that would be coming uh, from Metro would be taking the bus from Silver Spring. There may be a few that uh, would walk or take the bus from Tacoma Park. And if they are taking the bus, the ride on bus, it does, again, drop off uh, up here at the Nunley Center. So uh, there is a very limited amount of need or uh, drive for uh, pedestrian access from the southern area of the site. And you'll see later on in the presentation how we've addressed that in our organization of the uh, primary points of entry to, to the new building. 
Okay, so now we're going to do a little recap over what we presented on July 12th. And so I'll go through this kind of quickly. For those of you who are here, it uh, will be very repetitive. For those of you who weren't, it'll be a, a quick update on where we, where we stand before we t uh, take off into the new concepts that we're going to talk about tonight. We want to start off with just um, a refresher on the fact that this is a state-of-the-art higher education facility. These are not the old facilities that many of us went to school 10, 20, 30 years ago. Uh, where it was just four walls and a chalkboard and an instructor standing in front uh, directing. Many of the uh, successful attributes of a, um, of a new higher education facility really rely on what's called active learning, where students are engaged with each other, they're engaged on projects, they're engaged in uh, learning from uh, very unconventional uh, new sources. And creating a uh, flexible space within this new facility is a primary driver of how we're going to organize the new building because it really is uh, a proven uh, aspect of uh, architectural uh, design that can have um, a significant impact on the success of the students and the academic programs. We also do want to keep uh, in mind or remind everybody that this is going to be a LEED certified building, which means that it will be uh, LEED uh, Silver uh, as rated by the USGBC. Uh, so we're not going to forget about any of these significant uh, environmental attributes about the design. We're not going to really focus on much of this tonight, but those are going to be topics for conversation in some of the meetings coming up in October and later on this year. And again, a refresher on what is going to go in the building. This is a diagram showing all of the spaces as little colored blocks of confetti uh, in their relative sizes to each other. Uh, all the uh, orange blocks are the laboratories, all the purple blocks are the classroom and teaching facilities, and all the blue blocks are the offices. So very quickly, you can see just by the representation on the screen that this is primarily a laboratory facility. And we'll, be, we'll talk about, uh, as we present the concepts, how that's going to drive uh, some of the massing of the building and how it's organized on the site. So another quick uh, review of uh, what we looked at last time was there was some uh, uh, commentary from the neighborhood uh, and from the community about why couldn't the building be designed um, even before we had done any design work in a particular way. One of them was why can't it all be built on top of the existing Falcon Hall? And so we um, did this concept that showed that if we limited the footprint to just the existing Cal Falcon Hall, we would be looking at an eight-story building uh, on Fenton Street, which seemed to be very much out of character for not only the campus, but very much way out of character for the neighborhood. Uh, there was another uh, concept or suggestion that maybe the building should be limited in height off of Fenton Street and that all the mass be pushed into the center of campus. This, again, is way too tall for uh, the um, academic facility and that the uh, program is divided up between too many floors. It's stacked up too high and that it doesn't function very well uh, in that higher education uh, uh, community that we were talking about earlier. And then we looked at one other uh, hybrid concept where we had some of that uh, area shifted over to the um, on top of the existing footprint at Capitol Hall with the rest of the mass on the campus side. And again, this building ended up just being too tall and uh, the massing of the building pushed to the center of the campus didn't work well with the solar orientation that we were uh, uh, advocating for to minimize uh, solar gain on the building. So uh, this is now a review of the three concepts as we presented them last time on July 12th. We had concept one, which was framed edge. We uh, gave them names uh, besides numbers. So concept one was framed edge, and this is where the, the mass of the building of the laboratories was pushed up towards Fenton Street. There was a um, pavilion for the planetarium pushed out into the um, area just off of Tacoma Avenue, and then the rest of the building uh, nestled in behind it. A uh, concept that we called rotated pavilion, where there was a laboratory block that was along Fenton Street, and then another uh, block which was primarily offices and student resources on the campus side. And then a third scheme or concept that we called distributed bars, where we uh, basically used a very similar uh, idea where the uh, labs were on Fenton Street. There was a component uh, facing the campus that was primarily offices and uh, student um, uh, resources, planetarium pulled out. And uh, this concept was just broken down into a different architectural scale than the other two options the way we looked at them. So some of the commentary that we got back was that on concept one, the building, the way it presented itself on Tacoma Avenue, pushed the planetarium within the setback zone that we'll talk about again in a minute, but it pushed it much closer to Tacoma Avenue. Also, the way the building was bent and, and uh, followed the curve of Fenton Street 
presented a building facade that was taller and more obvious and more present on Tacoma Avenue versus what you saw in the other two schemes, which was a much more uh, subtle uh, uh, perception of the building within the um, Tacoma Avenue corridor. And in both these concepts, we got a lot of positive feedback on how these two worked and a lot of negative feedback on this. For, so for that particular reason, we're saying that concept one is kind of off the table. So we're going to look at uh, two uh, developments on concept two and concept three and how uh, adding that next layer of detail architecturally, how they can be uh, sort of developed one more level further. Uh, this is another uh, reiteration of the directives and the commitments that the college has made from the uh, president's letter. Uh, so primarily the uh, building zone, the way the, um, the college has rights to build within is the blue zone. But a, one uh, attribute that was committed to by the college is that the development of the new building will not exceed the current setback of Falcon Hall on Fenton Street. Uh, Directive number two was that the green area at the corner of Fenton and Tacoma Avenue where there's uh, well-established mature trees and mature landscape would not be part of the project and that would be preserved. There would be minimized windows along uh, Tacoma Avenue, so the primary uh, influence of the uh, artificial light on these residences would be minimized by minimizing the amount of windows on Tacoma Avenue. Ensure that the height is no more than two stories on Tacoma Avenue. So this is where we were talking about last time. We uh, developed this setback area that's rendered in red, 70 feet from the current setback of Falcon Hall, which is 110 feet. And uh, in that particular area, we're saying that we will limit the building to two stories or less, and that we will minimize the amount of windows or fenestration in that particular area. Uh, then there was um, a ticket take advantage of the topography. So for those of you that aren't familiar with the site, there's a 10-foot grade difference from Fenton Street down to the center of campus where the tennis courts are. If we organize the building correctly or uh, to take advantage of that, we can effectively bury one story of the building on Fenton Street and then you will uh, minimize the presence or the height of the building uh, within the neighborhood uh, by taking advantage of that grade difference. And then uh, locate all of the rooftop equipment away from Tacoma Avenue. So uh, we've talked a little bit about this on the past presentations, but with laboratories, there is um, some uh, additional mechanical uh, equipment and ventilation um, machinery that's going to have to uh, be located on the roof of the building. So that particular comment or directive was to organize as much of that as possible away from the neighborhood and on the northwest quadrant of the site. Uh, and then we were... Um, the other, the number seven, the directive was to maximize the building height and, uh, or maximize the building width and lower the height, so to spread out the building as much as possible. And you'll see in some of the comments we're going to talk about later, uh, we've looked at that in a variety of different ways to try to achieve that goal. All right, so uh, these are two new image, images of concept two and concept three developed one step further. And uh, what you'll see tonight is um, they are no longer these sort of big white blocks. They actually have some um, articulation associated with the structural bays. And that's one way for us to give that additional layer of scale and registration of how the mass sits on, on the site and how it's organized a little more closely. So I'll go through each concept uh, in more detail. So here we're looking at concept two. We're looking at the, uh, basically if you were to only look at the lowest level, and how it's dug into the ground. This gray wall that you see here is actually below grade. So uh, this is a basement or one story below the uh, parking surface up here. So uh, as we were talking about before, there's a 10 foot grade difference between Fenton Street and the campus. So if the building is one floor organized this way, you could walk in from here, but then you would be below grade on that side. So we're looking at uh, an organization of laboratories oriented north to south, and that's important to note. I'll point out a difference in a future scheme uh, in a minute. But uh, the laboratories are organized north to south, and that particular organization lends itself to a building proportion that is a little rigid, uh, and, and you'll see how that manifests itself in the building facade as we, as we move up through the uh, different floors. But two other things to note here is one is the planetarium and how it's located on the southern uh, quadrant, but it's inside the building and then the Learning Center, which is a uh, very active, engaged part of the academic uh, portion of the program, and that is intentionally put right on the campus uh, side to um, 
give it as much access to the outdoors as possible and access to natural light and ability to spill out and use the green space uh, out in front of the building. And oh, there we go. Okay, so uh, one slide, uh, one floor up. So here you see the laboratories again organized in a very similar fashion as on the floor below. But you'll see two more red uh, triangles indicating entry points. We talked about uh, a small drop off here. We're not considering this as a primary main entry, but this is more of a convenience entry coming in, coming in off of Fenton Street where you would uh, have access to the handicapped parking and the drop off. Primary building entry would be uh, from the north corner, and as we talked about before, there's a lot of site circulation and, and pedestrian pathways that take you from the Nunley Center south to the, this portion of the campus. So this would be the most convenient point of entry for many people. We also have that entry that we showed on the floor below that is, um, or on the, on the previous slide that was on the floor below here. Sorry, there we go. Uh, so one floor up, here we're seeing again the laboratories, and then this building is complete at this point in the evolution as we go vertically. So it's two stories facing um, the campus with a potential green roof on top. We haven't really talked much about what that means, uh, but it, essentially it could be a planted surface. Not, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's a, uh, a roof that's used for events or activities, but more of just a, um, a planted green roof to minimize its solar impact and its energy use for the building. Oops, sorry. There we go. Okay, and then this is the completed mass. So we have one more story uh, on Fenton Street, which would be the laboratories, and then with a block of mechanical equipment on top. What you're seeing rendered here is these little sticks with these beams on top is what we're, we refer to as a screen wall. There would be uh, mechanical equipment up on the roof, but then it would be organized in such a fashion that it would be screened from view with an architectural finished wall around the perimeter, and that would uh, minimize its, uh, the sort of visual clutter that you sometimes see with this mechanical equipment when it's on the roof. So uh, to summarize, this building uh, in this concept is one story below grade on this portion, two stories above grade, and then one mechanical level, which is that area there. From the campus side, it's two stories. So there are two revealed stories from the campus side and then the large roof area. And just uh, for comparison, the image on the left is what we presented on July 12th. And here's the image that we are looking at today. There are some subtle differences. We're pointing them out here with these notes. So there's a, a subtle difference in how the, the massing is uh, organized on this corner. And again, that's primarily because of the way the modules of the laboratories work and how you know, if you're going to uh, organize the labs in an efficient way, it's uh, more effective to just take out that entire corner than what is uh, a less efficient, uh, smaller chunk to be taken out. And again, some of the arm wrestling that we're doing to get the program to work internally within the mass of the building has necessitated a change in how the notch is articulated between the two masses, so you'll see that here. Uh, but effectively, they're, they're very similar be besides those, um, those major differences. And then uh, one of the things that we got a lot of positive feedback was like when we take the new uh, concept and overlay it on top of the existing Falcon Hall, gives you a really good sense of how the building's gonna change, the new building's gonna change um, its impression or the presence on the campus and within the neighborhood. So here you see in orange are the current buildings, Falcon Hall and Science South. And then there's uh, concept two overlaid on top. So you can see the presence of, of Falcon Hall from Tacoma Avenue. Uh, is actually more pronounced. It's closer to uh, Tacoma Avenue. And then the two-story block uh, that faces the campus is set back. But they have a very comparable height from 24.8 on the shortest part of Falcon Hall to 39 feet that we're uh, uh, estimating would be the height of the building on the campus side. And then the large uh, laboratory block is uh, pushed back towards Fenton Street. So you can see it's a, a different um, manifestation of that massing along Fenton. Oh, uh, boy. Sorry, we have the clicker here is a little aggressive. There it goes again. It's not cooperating. Are you clicking too? Or... <laughs> okay. Maybe it'll stop. All right, so this is an overview. One of the things, as we mentioned earlier, that um, was a comment from the neighbors in the community was like to pr provide dimensions. So again, we're giving you very round overall dimensions for the setback and the size of these buildings. And I think um, 
you know, we, we're fairly confident that it's going to be within that range. It's going to be plus or not minus a few feet. Uh, we still have a lot, long way to go to really pin down exactly what the dimensions of this building are. But this is a general uh, range, which we think is very safe to, to talk about at this stage of the project. So um, let me go to the next slide. One of the things that we heard a lot about last time, too, was like, what is this thing going to look like from the community perspective, from the eye level, from the street level? So we have a series of views from eye level that we're going to run through. We have, we're on slide 37. There's over 100 slides here. It's going to get really repetitive later, but I'll, we'll start showing these now, and you'll see what I'm talking about when we get later in the show. So don't get too intimidated, and hope we don't uh, put anybody to sleep with some of this. But uh, this is the view from the intersection of Fenton and Tacoma. Looking across to the building, there are several mature trees in that triangular zone. This is a key plan that you'll see on every one of the renderings as well. So we're looking basically uh, up, straight up from the uh, across Tacoma Avenue through that green space at the building here. None of the trees in this area are going to get removed, and there's no plan to um, do any construction in that area. So effectively, this will be the view when it's all done. You can barely see the building ghosted in behind it. Uh, some of the trees obviously are deciduous, some are evergreen. The evergreens are in the middle here. So these are the ones that are going to primarily be always screening the building throughout the year. So just to give everybody a sense of what's going on behind the trees, here's a view with those trees just ghosted out. This will not be the view uh, that you will see with the completed project, but if you were to remove the trees, you can see they're ghosted in uh, very lightly in the rendering. This is the massing of the building that is residing behind that screen of trees. And then a uh, very similar uh, view, just rotated around a little bit. Again, you can see the orientation arrow here. We're basically uh, right in this uh, central part of Fenton, uh, uh, near the so southern part of the um, bike trail. And again, that uh, two-story block with the penthouse and mechanical screen above. There are several large trees in here that you can see are screened out that will help to minimize the presence of the building and minimize the view. But here, just for um, argument's sake, we're taking the trees out so you can get a, a true sense of what that building mass is going to look like uh, sitting um, on that por particular portion of the site. And then moving up Fenton, so here we're up near where uh, Science North and Science South come together, uh, where the new building would be uh, sitting at directly adjacent to Science North. And again, a few trees have been uh, screened out to uh, give you a clear view of what the building is. Uh, so you have two full stories exposed on Fenton Street and uh, the mechanical equipment on top. And again, uh, just to reiterate, this frame that you're seeing in front of these mechanical elements right here is, will be infilled with an architectural finish of some kind to minimize the presence of that mechanical equipment. And again, sometimes these things can get quite unsightly, so the idea is to give it a nice, clean architectural appearance. So all that stuff will be screened from view. It's also important to note that what we're rendering right here is just the structural frame. This is not meant to represent any windows or any uh, large building openings. It's just a, the, the, the columns and the slabs, the way they were, will likely be conceptually organized for the new, the new design uh, without any uh, sense of, des of uh, fenestration or design yet. That will be in some of the upcoming uh, presentations that we'll be doing in October. But it does give you a, a better sense of scale and, and presence of the building on, on the campus and on the um, public vantage points around the campus. So OK, here we're uh, looking at the, the concept to uh, directly up the access drive or that one curb cut off of Tacoma Avenue. So this is a hybrid rendering where we're actually showing Falcon Hall in relationship to the proposed new building. So Falcon Hall is this uh, brownish tan building or element here, and then the new building is the white frame beyond, and the curvilinear volume that you see there is the planetarium. And then if we, that's what it looks like when Falcon Hall is removed. So just to put it back, you can see the presence of Falcon Hall is much greater uh, from this vantage point on um, Tacoma Avenue, and then, oh, sorry. So I'm misbehaving again. OK. Uh, so th again, the presence of this particular element is uh, less than the existing Falcon Hall. And the <laughs> Sorry. Moving over to New York Avenue, so again, the orientation point here. So we're looking at, uh, I think it's called Cosmopolitan Way across New York Avenue, looking at the building. These are all existing trees, so we're not proposing any new trees in this particular view. You can see the new building hiding behind that screen of trees. And then just to see what it would look like if you remove the existing trees, which is not what's being recommended or proposed, here's that two-story block sitting on top of uh, or sitting uh, facing the campus quad. 
And then the, the taller element that, along Fenton in the background with that screen wall concealing the mechanical equipment. And then just as uh, an overview summary, the organization of the building is roughly the same as what we looked at on um, January tw or, uh, July 12th. Uh, the setback from Tacoma Avenue is exceeding that of the existing Falcon Hall and is at 150 feet. And then the overall dimensions again. So uh, now looking at concept three in a little more detail. Uh, here you'll see, uh, I pointed out last time that the laboratories were oriented north and south. Here they're oriented east and west. This is a sort of planning uh, discussion that we're having right now. Uh, there are advantages to both, and we haven't quite resolved which is the most um, effective for the internal programming for the building. But this does create a different massing and a different organization that gets manifested in a different way proportionally in the design as it's elevated on the site. So uh, in a very similar fashion uh, to the last concept, there, this lower level is one story below grade. So what you're seeing here is that gray wall is all effectively a basement wall. So you can't, there are no windows into these, win into these labs right here. Uh, and then the planetarium in this scheme is actually pulled out. So the planetarium you'll see is nestled out into that uh, setback zone. Uh, so it's 165 feet off of Tacoma Avenue. And then the learning center, which is, again, the, one of the most, most active parts of the program for the uh, uh, higher education facility, is organized right uh, adjacent to the uh, campus uh, to have a lot of activity and spill out in natural light um, between those two indoor and outdoor environments. And the lower level entry, which, uh, again, works very similar to the last concept we looked at. Oh, sorry. I think Okay, so moving up one level, very similar to what we talked about in the last concept, it makes a lot of sense to have an entry point on the northern tip of the building because of all the pedestrian traffic that will come out of the Nunley Center and the bus drops off, bus drop offs and the parking garage filtering down through campus. So we're seeing this as a primary point of entry. Another secondary point of entry off of the curb cut and the handicapped parking. And then um, this level sits above the lower level that has its own entry off the campus. And then uh, adding one additional floor on top of that, so you'll see the laboratories, again, get organized on top of the, um, the lower level laboratories and a few more laboratories actually front on the campus side here with some of the offices mixed in between. And continuing to go up one story. And here um, you'll see the um, completed massing of the building. So here it's slightly different than the last concept. And even though we had um, a discussion about, you know, the thinness of these bars the last time and how that, um, you know, the massing of the, the planetarium would be slightly different when it's um, uh, off of the uh, Tacoma Avenue and have a relationship with uh, the neighborhood residential scale because it is a very similar proportion. And then the thinness of these particular elements also has a relationship to the campus uh, environment and cap campus context or the, the neighborhood uh, context. Um, so uh, the laboratory wing or the laboratory bar that is on Fenton Street is one story below grade again. This time it's three stories above grade plus the mechanical penthouse. So this is effectively one story taller than the last concept. And then there's uh, three stories on the campus side as well. Oh, sorry, jumping ahead again. Okay, so then a, a comparison between uh, what the concept was uh, on July 12th versus what we're showing you today. And again, that one of the things to keep in mind is that we, there are a lot of details that we're working out behind the scenes. The, the building massing needs to move around as we start to get our hands around the program and how it's going to interact with itself and, and be supported by the infrastructure. So some of the massing moves and some of the scale shifts that you see are just part of that process. It's a discovery, discovery process as we're developing the architecture and the engineering. And some of that you're starting to see here where the massing of the building on um, the campus side is a little longer than it was before this like little terrace area setback got consumed by the extension of that longer bar. Um, but effectively, besides that and some of the other proportional changes that you see in this mass of the building, it's effectively the same diagram. And again, the proportional changes in this portion of the mass are really driven by those lab modules that I was pointing out on the, on the lower floors and how they're organized within the footprint of the building. And again, the very uh, similar kind of exercise where we overlay the proposed concept with, 
So here you can see uh, in a very similar fashion that um, you know, the, the planetarium is significantly further back. It's probably 20, 25 feet further back from the existing edge of, Cal of Falcon Hall. And then the um, presence of the, uh, of the campus side of the building is taller than on the other um, scheme that we looked at previously, but so it's three stories coming from here and then that larger lab block uh, nestled back against Fenton. Next slide. Then the overview slide again with the dimensions. So we're looking at 165 foot setback from uh, Tacoma Avenue on this concept. And again, thinner uh, architectural expression with the elements that face the neighborhood to try to get this relationship between the contacts and the scale more compatible here where uh, there's less of a need to do that along Fenton Street. So the massing of the building is uh, less interrupted along this um, Fenton Street side. And then the views again. So here's the same view that we looked at before from Tacoma Avenue and Fenton with trees and then without trees. And so this is where um, I'll pause and just say, we're gonna show you all of these concepts side by side later in the presentation. That's where it starts to get really repetitive. Uh, so we're gonna run through these here on an isolated version, then we'll show them all side by side so you can really see a one-to-one -one comparison. And it'll help you understand the differences between the two. But here you're seeing the three-story uh, element on Fenton Street, three stories on the campus side, but there is a grade difference between the two. So the three stories here do not necessarily align with the three stories here. There's one story difference. And then the planetarium nestled in the middle. And then rotating up a little bit on Fenton Street, so you'll see the three stories uh, uh, presenting itself on Fenton Street and the planetarium there, some ghosted out trees that would obviously still be there that we're not planning on taking out. And then the view from Fenton Street, three stories along Fenton Street, Science North. And one of the things we are not showing here are any new trees. So all the trees you're seeing in these presentations and these renderings are existing trees. Obviously there will be some new trees. These uh, facade elements that you'll see presenting on Fenton and even on, on Tacoma Avenue, there are opportunities to add trees, to add screening if that's of particular interest to anybody. And then the view again from um, Tacoma Avenue looking right up the uh, drive that's currently there with Falcon Hall sitting in the foreground. And the next slide is without Falcon Hall. And so you can see there's, uh, if you go back one, Kevin, there is, a, again, a very significant presence of, Cal of Falcon Hall that uh, the, the proposed design recedes significantly from that. And then the view from New York Avenue again with trees and then without the existing trees. You can see this is a much taller building on the campus side. And then the overview slide, uh, reiterating all the dimensions, so 165 foot setback in this particular option. So that red zone that we talked about before was sort of the sacred zone to try to stay within two stories. We're barely touching it with this scheme. So the, the, the planetarium uh, intrudes on that just a little bit, but not, not by much. Okay, so after we looked at these uh, last two concepts and we developed them uh, over the course of the last month or so, we uh, thought it was obvious to us, but you guys can tell us what you really think, that there may be a hybrid scheme between the two. So if we took the uh, sort of architectural uh, distribution of the masses and the thinness and the proportions that were, uh, we heard were resonating with some of the neighbors on the, um, how it related to the neighborhood with the smaller proportions on Tacoma Avenue. If we took that particular aspect of concept three and merged it with the lower height of concept two, what would happen? So we'll show you. So um, again, we're gonna go through the same format this time and do a little bit quicker. But uh, so the lower level works effectively the same as some of the other concepts we just showed. Laboratories organized here, the one story below grade, entry off the campus side. Here we have, again, the uh, thing that we heard was um, desirable was to have the planetarium as an element that is adjacent to the neighborhood and use that as a uh, relatable architectural element. Go to the next slide. Then um, having an entry on the north side, one more floor. Uh, on top of the laboratories with offices, student uh, resources, and laboratories off of Fenton Street. Next slide. And then building up through the building, a uh, stack of additional offices and student resources here, laboratories here, the um, planetarium, two stories, planetarium two stories tall facing Tacoma, and then the overall building mass. So effectively, you're, what you're uh, getting is the two-story presence on uh, Fenton Street here, very similar building massing but you're merging that with some of the thinness and small, 
smaller proportions of the building that is really as visible and relatable to the uh, neighborhood context from this side. And again, that overlay on top of the existing Falcon Hall. And you can see it, it, it has a very similar kind of relationship on how it um, overlaps that existing building mass. And then the overall uh, summary slide from the bird's eye view. Here we're looking at 155 foot setback uh, from Tacoma Avenue. So this one does protrude a little bit further out into that two story zone that we talked about as part of the president's directives. But the building mass along Fenton is lower and uh, the proportions of this portion of the, of the building are slightly different. So again, the views with trees, without trees. And again, you, you guys, since you're seeing this for the first time, you won't see the differences very readily here, but when we show you, show you them all together, it becomes more apparent. So go to the next slide. So the view from uh, Fenton Street with tree, without trees, uh, further up Fenton Street near uh, Science North, very similar to concept two. And then uh, from uh, Tacoma Avenue with Falcon Hall and without Falcon Hall and the planetarium front and center right there in, the, in your view. And then New York Avenue with trees and without trees. So a taller building element here, okay? And then the summary slide, again, 155 foot setback for the planetarium and thinner uh, overall building massing on this portion of the building and a larger bulkier massing along Fenton. Okay, so here's where we're gonna see them all together. So this is probably the time to pay attention. <laughs> Okay, so here's the first two concepts, concept two, concept three, and even though these are out of sequence from numerically, concept 2.5 is on the third. So here you can see them all together. You can see the massing differences between these two. The one thing that we realized after the last presentation that really wasn't very uh, readily apparent was how much taller concept three was when you look at them in this particular viewpoint. That's why we did all the eye level views. So we'll take you through all those eye level views uh, here and so you can see the differences. So um, again, then the overall massing with the existing Falcon Hall. You can see they all have very similar relationships, but they're all slightly different uh, for a variety of different reasons. And then the overview. Again, these are good. this is gonna be the subject matter for the breakout groups. So we have these all printed out on boards. You can walk up and study them more closely uh, in a few minutes when we do the breakout. Okay, so here we're gonna run through them side by side. So concept two from Fenton and uh, Tacoma, concept three, and then concept 2.5. And then next slide. So here they are all three together. You can really see the difference here, the height, and you can see the difference in the um, planetarium between these two. Since this building is so much taller, uh, we really need to um, work hard to get the building uh, below grade. Here you'll see that um, these floors don't necessarily align in the same way, and that's why the massing of the planetarium is slightly different between these two. Okay, so now we're rotating up, or uh, right in the middle on Fenton at that last bend before it uh, hits Tacoma. So concept two, concept three, once floor added, concept 2.5. Go to the next one. Here they are all three together. And again, here you can start to see the presence of the, these two are very similar. This one's a little bit taller. Oh, a lot taller, one story taller. <laughs> and then looking on Fenton Street, a two story mass of concept two, a three story mass of concept three, and then back to a two story mass for concept 2.5. And then all three together. And then looking at uh, Tacoma Avenue, up the existing drive, so concept two, concept three, concept 2.5, and then all three together. And again, you can start to see, again, uh, a big difference in how the uh, planetarium is treated, uh, but effectively it's always in generally the same place programmatically. And then from New York Avenue, concept two, concept three, you see a big difference in the massing there and then concept 2.5, and then all three together. Josh? Yes, yeah. The trade-off, 
between concept two and concept 2.5. Um, oh, I'm sorry. So what is the trade-off between concept two and concept 2.5? Can you go to the overview slide maybe? Yeah. So um, personally, architecturally, I think this is more interesting. We heard a lot of commentary the last time about how the differentiation and the building massing to break down the scale a little bit um, made it more accessible from a contextual point of view. Uh, so I think there's an architectural uh, drive and preference for that organization. It's a little clearer and a little more interesting. Uh, concept two uh, you know, is valid. Now, we're not presenting anything here that we don't think is valid. And we could be happy with any one of these schemes. We can make it work. Uh, concept two is a little more flat and, and sort of unarticulated. It doesn't mean that we can't work that out and come up with something interesting out of it, but it has a little less um, you know, vari variety in the building mass that makes it a little more um, unsophisticated in a way. No, the, the big height difference, uh, well, it depends on where you're asking. So on Fenton Street, the heights are the same. But on the campus side, uh, on concept 2.5, we've got three stories. On concept three, we have three stories. And in concept two, you only have two stories. So that's a big difference. And effectively, that's n not really perceptible. It's perceptible a little bit from here, from Tacoma Avenue. Um, it is perceptible from New York, too, when you saw those over overview slides and compared all three together. This higher mass is more visible from deeper away, away from the campus on New York Avenue. So uh, I think that wraps it up for the formal presentation. Again, there's gonna be a breakout group. If there are detailed questions, we can go into it in the breakout sessions. Oh, oh I'm sorry. Great. I feel like Montgomery College should offer us all architecture degrees after that presentation. That was a lot. I want to reiterate what, what Bob said at the end there. We, uh, as the project team, aren't pushing for any one of these options. We didn't present a 2.5 because we think it solves all our problems. These are all doable. We wouldn't have spent 106 slides on them if we were trying to get you comfortable with one of the three options. So we really are looking for feedback. The goal for the next meeting will be to refine this into a smaller group of options. So please ask questions. Give us feedback. Um, the Four groups. Group one is in the art gallery off the lobby space. Group two is in the lobby space. Group three and four are in this room. Three will be up there. Four will be down here. Every group has an architect, a note taker, and a facilitator. So let's break up into that. We'll spend some time, um, and we'll come back together in this room in about 45 minutes and report back out. Yes. It's a ton of information. So comments will continue to be open throughout. So on the website, there's lots of ways to submit comments, emails, phone, et cetera. So that'll remain open throughout, absolutely. And all of those will still get collected and put on the website, absolutely. Any other questions? Please. Excellent. Very good. Thank you all. Okay, perfect. Let's go ahead and get started. Perfect. Okay, the good news is we only have 60 more slides before we let you all go home. <laughs> No, we are going to do some quick report outs of the group. Um, so group one, is there a representative from group one or are they still coming in? Perfect, so group one will go last. Group two, group two, tell us what you talked about. Um, the notes that we took, uh, uh, option number two was the least imposing and had the largest green roof, which was seen as a positive. Uh, number 2.5 was the most interesting and had a lot of opportunity for articulation and a lot of uh, architectural interest. Uh, option three was universally decried as too big and it should not move forward as an option that we will see at later presentations. Um, there was a lot of comments about the building along uh, Fenton Street being very long and the need for it to be articulated and um, the, uh, materials to be selected in order for it to seem residential as opposed to being monolithic. Um, there was a request for new views to see the building from further away, both from the railroad bridge and from up on New York Avenue. Um, and, uh, or the, the New York Avenue and uh, Fenton, uh, Tacoma intersection. 
uh, more uh, light was requested to get to the basement level because people were concerned that, uh, that you would not be able to uh, get any sense of, of daylight down there and that it should be, it should read at least in some form even if it's in the common spaces and not in the classrooms or laboratories themselves. And um, the last one was, oh, if the planetarium is pulled out, uh, it should be fenestrated, not fenestrated, uh, it should be uh, articulated from a material standpoint so that it reads as a planetarium and it can be understood as a planetarium from the exterior. Perfect. Anyone else from group two have anything to add to that? Any questions for group two? Excellent, thank you. Round of applause, it takes a lot to get up here. Good job. Group three. Group three. <laughs> Making a return appearance. Here you go. Thank you. Absolutely. First off, I want to thank Gabo for helping out with this. And actually, if you can just angle it a little more like this. There we go. So we, we have 106 line items to share with you this evening. <laughs> I'd like to start off with this right now. We're going to go into auction mode, auctioneer mode. Um, in general, we just confirmed that uh, all three concepts have uh, 134,000 square foot um, designs. That's the, so that was confirmed. Um, we have West Silver Spring and four adjacent neighbors in a group three that were participating in this effort. Um, the architectural team understood the feedback in terms of height and scale. 2.5, not as small, but not huge, was a comment made. Um, the orange area may be landscaping. So there was a general discussion of what happens in front of the building in terms of landscaping, in terms of the parking there. We have the uh, faculty parking that I think goes down to about from 75 spaces to maybe 45 spaces and an entrance and or exit. We're thinking maybe just make it one of those off of Tacoma Avenue. Um, and then what's the vision for the entry from the Tacoma side? As I said, the faculty parking emergency. Thank you. Uh, can we limit the times of the Tacoma lot usage? Again, that goes back to that space in front of the, uh, what would be the planetarium. Um, right now, a 2.5 is set back and shares the, uh, and shares the aesthetics. The aesthetics, thank you. Only one way in and out. Um, if we can do the shorter version with the same square foot, that's the best option. 2.5 looks good. Not square, ugly blocks was one of the comments. 2.5 plus 3 is at least multiple blocks. Street views are helpful. Um, I think that was um, shared by everyone. If you're walking up from whether it's a Tacoma Avenue or Fenton Street or New York, uh, looking at the elevation of the building, that really helps. So that was appreciated. Um, the planetarium, we're looking at the difference between two and three, whether it's sort of a squared off um, shape or whether it's cylindrical like a drum um, was, was discussed. Uh, 2.5 and 3 maybe allow for more creativity. They can make it an organic, beautiful building. The planetarium in two seems less imposing do the walk, uh, just the real life of uh, walking the, uh, the, the site is, is very important from all those different vantage points. Um, the further setback, the better. That would be from Tacoma. Um, I guess you could consider that off of Fenton as well, but mainly Tacoma. Um, the en encroachment versus the size was something else mentioned. Does the planetarium have to be square as opposed to a drum shape, circular shape? Can we use field stone or local quarry? So the, uh, all the images that we saw were sort of like, um, in terms of the main masses, were sort of, to me, like parking structures, which created a visual tension that was sort of exciting. But when you put the skin on the building, it's going to make a big difference in the fenestration, obviously. Um, OK, green roof area. That's still in question as to whether that'll be incorporated or not in the two-story height buildings. So it's possible, but we don't know yet. Um, that'll be the, I guess, the October 2nd meeting. We're going to be looking at those responses from the architect. Can we have a planetarium uh, complement the local aesthetics design bungalow mission style? Thank you. So the New York Avenue neighbors might prefer uh, version two. 
And again, that's uh, looking from New York Avenue to seeing the, the height of the building, the massing of the building on the other side of campus there. We're understanding there's existing um, trees there and there may be some others planted, but trees take a long time to grow and trees die. So that was uh, an item that was brought up. Um, screen walls hiding the hardware on the roof, so I, that's like mechanical equipment. We bought up that all the uh, air, the air coming out of the uh, labs would be treated somehow. Uh, you know, it just it, it'd be designed by code. So if there had to be some sort of a scrubbing or whatever, the air would go straight up as opposed to out in any particular direction. But one reason of having them located on the Fenton side of the uh, campus is so that to keep it away from the neighborhood as much as possible. Um, the architects have done, Bob said, we've done labs in this close to residential areas before. And uh, soil samples uh, have been taken. There's been geotechnical work done for the structural integrity of the foundation. We don't, we don't have that information yet, but that will be shared. That'll, that'll help the structural engineer design the foundation of the building. Um, and it will not matter. Oh, sorry, oh. there will be water because it's oh. Silver Spring. Yeah, there will be water because we're in Silver Spring area. There's Sligo Creek uh, there. I lied. One more. Okay, how many, more, how many more pages? This is it. We're talking about uh, the VOCs here. <laughs> okay, we're at line item 86. Uh, uh, oh, yeah, I want to face the audience here. Okay, water problems in Falcon Hall, uh, constant flow of water out of the building into the creek. There have been issues about that with, with neighbors actually experiencing a lot of extra water on their uh, properties. Timing on learning about designing characteristics, that's going to be the October 2nd meeting. Fenton is a busy road, worried about, this is a, a big issue about, worried about not only pedestrians, but ve vehicles just jamming up on Fenton or New York or Tacoma because of more uh, folks coming uh, to, to this area because of the building there. Um, and I guess Fenton drop-off uh, could, could um, alternate on New York Avenue traffic uh, because there's a new drop-off on Fenton. That seemed to be a good idea, but it's just how that's actually accessed and the reality of that working and a concern about additional uh, uh, vehicular issues along the uh, surrounding. That was 106. Thank you. <laughs> I'm guessing no, but did we miss anything in group three? <laughs> any, any questions for group three? That was great. Uh, yes. Got it. So for my team taking notes, make sure we grab that comment. Um, group number four. There you go. All right. OK. So we spent some time going through the different options, and we came up with the following. Uh, concept number two we thought wasn't very interesting, um, sort of a boring building. Um, two boxes ca connected together. Uh, we want something that looks good. Uh, like an office park, you know, it's just kind of, mm. Anyway, less, um, uh, le less, uh, potential, uh, outside potential outside use, right. Um, like the, the what? Low profile. Le low profile on on the t uh, Fenton Street, uh, a lot of mass, um, um, le less intensity, uh, add uh, shading. shading and canopies um, to sort of soften it, I guess. Anyway, concept three, uh, the planetarium uh, and extension, uh, too close together, uh, the planetarium dome, uh, versus a uh, uh, box uh, could could make the building look more interesting. Uh, like them as boxes uh, for the planetarium. So one other comment was, depending on what technology is used inside for projection and so forth, it really doesn't necessarily have to be a dome with virtual reality coming to the fore these days. Um, so. Concept 2.5, geometry was uh, pretty interesting. Uh, 
um, uh, not uh, what? Intruding. Intruding. intruding as much on Tacoma, uh, not as tall as three, not dominant uh, uh, area, um, more efficient uh, programming, all floors are continuous. And then in the other comments, we came up with a, a show when the planetarium is... Uh, Structurally, for all three concepts. Okay. Uh, you want to? <laughs> Go. <laughs> um, uh, keep, keep climate change in mind when you're designing that uh, you could conceivably see 30 or 40 inches of rainfall in a 48-hour period. Um, plan plan for snow at least six feet because uh, it's going to happen too. Um, and uh, oh, by the way, it's going to get to 115 in the shade, so you may want to may want to have some canopies to keep uh, keep the pedestrians going from the north of the campus to the south of the campus sheltered somewhat. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, the pharmaceutical building on Colesville and Spring Street is a good example of a net zero building. Um, I also thought that it might be worth approaching the president of that company to ask for assistance in becoming a net zero building for this, for this project and that they may be willing to grant uh, money to, uh, to the campus to do that. It's a long shot, but all I can say is no. Um, anyway, um, entrance to the planetarium uh, wasn't really clear. Is that what it? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And then, um, as far back from oh, as far back as from Tacoma as possible, um, more green roof uh, for all concepts. Uh, and it was also mentioned that if you put photovoltaic panels on the roof, you can ballast them with green roof. Uh, systems, and you can also have thermal uh, panels, uh, sun drum panels on the back of the PV panels, so you can get triple, triple benefit out of the same roof area. Um, then you can have more. Uh, keep New York Avenue. What does it say? Residents in mind. Um, residents in mind, mm -hmm. and uh, implications implications of box versus dome for planetarium. Uh, pay attention to students uh, coming from the bus uh, Tacoma Metro. Uh, uh, try to do a survey to figure out when, what the peaks are for the, for the kids coming from the Tacoma Metro and um, also might wanna do, you know, do a traffic study when the most students are coming to classes. Uh, construction process as a living classroom. Also, after the building is built, um, have it actually um, uh, be part of the curriculum where they can study the building and its systems because it's going to have some very innovative uh, heating and cooling and, and uh, climate control systems in it. And uh, it's also going to have um, uh, probably rainwater harvesting uh, and uh, landscape watering and fl water uh, for flushing toilets and so forth. Um, certification uh, for certification program for Link Springs and Niagara Four. Uh, these are programs that GSA is now adopting uh, for all of their 9,500 buildings, and so those would be good courses uh, to assimilate into the uh, curriculum. Um, uh, alternative forms of transportation, um, uh, spot for parking. You know, we're seeing all these, everything from electric bicycles to uh, the, the little scooters. Uh, I don't know what else to call them, but scooters. Um, uh, th they have electric scooters, and, and um, they also have uh, just lime green and orange, all kinds of color different bikes that, that, and one comment on that was that they can't be parked in the middle of the campus. They have to be on public right-of-way or public land. So they would have to be parking areas for these 
alternative transportation vehicles to be parked on Fenton. Okay, I think that goes. Thank you. Anything else for group four? Any questions for group four? Excellent, group one. Come on up. We're giving out an award for the briefest and most efficient presentation. So our group was um, a few representatives from Montgomery College staff and faculty. So many of the comments are sort of internally focused, but there are some that relate to the massings of the building. Okay. Awesome. Okay, so for concept two, um, they liked that the, um, the smaller footprint on the top floor labs um, could be used for uh, security measures. So they thought that it would be safer for specialized equipment potentially. Um, and for concept three, they, uh, a few people felt that the view of the planetarium um, wasn't as uh, in your face. They liked the extra floor and the vertical traffic better. Um, and they liked how there was more windows and more natural light. Um, they also liked the green space on the roof of the building. For 2.5, they um, a few people liked the way it addresses the campus side um, and how it was more open. And then they a few people also felt that the neighbor side, the planetarium, was in your face a little bit. Um, and for overall general comments, um, they want to make sure none of the concepts um, sacrifice any square feet. They want to make sure that there's uh, service elevators for specialized equ heavy equipment. And um, they want to make sure that the greenhouse uh, is more of a controlled environment and they're taking in you know, natural factors. Um, they want to make sure that all the concepts uh, take in mind the circulation um, of the building. And then uh, they talked about telescopes and the need to be able to see the sky. So if, if telescopes are being implemented into the building, just taking in mind the trees and the skyline. And overall, uh, making sure that there's enough parking. And um, there was one last comment that said that, the, um, that, we did a, or that everyone did a great job with the footprint um, of all the concepts. And yeah, that was about it. I think we're the briefest. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love it. Any questions for group one? Perfect. I think we have one more slide up here. Absolutely. The shape of the planetarium, it's a matter of everybody thinks it should be a dome, and that's really nice. But building a dome building is going to cost a lot more money. And basically, you want to spend money on what's inside the building. And uh, the planetarium inside there is going to cost plenty. But if you want to spend the extra money to make it look like a dome, that's going to be uh, probably an eyesore for a lot of people. Great. Good comment. Other questions? Great. I think we're in good shape. Next meeting is October 2nd. Um, at this point, we're probably almost to October 2nd. So if you just want to stay, we'll do the meeting tonight. No, we will have everything posted online, including the PowerPoint presentation and all your comments in the coming days. Please give us additional thoughts as you sleep on this and have more, and we'll be back with another iteration. Thank you so much for hanging in there tonight. It was a good meeting.